Hello and welcome back to another one of my productivity training videos. In this video I'm going to share seven often overlooked ways that you can be more productive on the computer. Have a look in the show notes uh, below this episode to get access to the blog post where you can actually read more about each of these tips as well. Now the first tip is to use a monitor. Uh, so I'm plugged into my external monitor right now. I'm normally working off a 13 inch MacBook Pro and I would say I am far more productive, far more efficient because I use an external monitor. Primarily because you can just see more of what you're doing. I actually just got back from a six week trip where I was just working on my laptop and I have to say it was really nice getting back home, getting onto a big screen again. So to show you what I mean, like here we are on the web, here's Asana, a task and project management tool I use every single day. And as you can see, I can see a lot of the app. I've got my project in the middle, I've got my task on the right hand side, and here is the same screen uh, on just my laptop. So you can see you just can't see as much of the, the project or the task. You have to scroll around a little bit more to kind of see the full extent of your work. So if it's a spreadsheet, you're going to have to scroll more to see that complete spreadsheet if you're working just off a laptop. So if you are someone that is working off a laptop and you find yourself in one place a lot of the time and you do have the opportunity to set up an external monitor, I would highly recommend it. For a few hundred dollars, you can get a pretty inexpensive monitor and I think you will very quickly notice the impact that it could have. The second tip is to use as many keyboard shortcuts as you can. When I'm working on my computer, my goal is to try and touch and use the mouse as little as possible and I try and get everything done with the keyboard. Reason being is it's actually just generally faster than moving a mouse, clicking a menu, selecting an option. You can often, if you know the sheet shortcuts, get things done a lot faster. And the more shortcuts you use, you'll actually start to just commit them to muscle memory. There's actually not a lot of memorization required. Once you sort of develop that habit, it gets into your muscle memory, your fingers will just start doing things, dancing across the keyboard, and people will be watching over your shoulder going, how are you doing that? Uh, it happens to me quite a lot. So some of the key shortcuts are firstly navigating. So obviously these differ from PC to Mac. On the Mac, you've got like command tab you can navigate and switch between all your applications so I can um, command tab to switch and then let go or I can command shift tab to tab backwards on the Mac you've also got uh, control and then the arrows to move between spaces as well so those are some simple navigation shortcuts then you've got all your app specific shortcuts as well so maybe in the finder command N to open a new window option command F to start searching uh, command W to close the window uh, I've also got command space, I can start searching. This is actually a, a, going back to navigation, very quick way to find files and documents on the computer. Um, and of course, different app applications like mail, for example, if I switch over to mail, uh, command N to start a new email, I can tab between fields and then shift command D to send the message. You've got all your normal formatting shortcuts as well, like bold, underline, italicize, but it's also worth learning how to insert bulleted lists, things like that as well. And finally, a really useful one is actually using the keyboard in place of your mouse. So I've got some text here. Now, instead of using my mouse to select text, I can actually use keyboard shortcuts to move my cursor through this text. So if I press option and then arrow, you can see my cursor jumping along the bottom line there. Um, or I could do I could move up and down, and then I've got command left and right to jump to the beginning or end of a line. And if I hold shift while doing any of this, so let's actually go to the top. If I hold shift and then option, it'll select a bunch of words, and then maybe I want to go down and then a couple of words across. Or I could do command shift arrow to select the whole line. So when you start learning these shortcuts, you can actually, you can really start to replace how much you use the mouse. The third tip is to speed up your mouse. So when you do eventually have to use your mouse, it's great to have the tracking speed be nice and fast. And the reason for this is that you just can move the mouse quicker without having to physically move your hand as much. And the nice little side benefit of this is it actually uh, reduces the stress and strain on your hand. So if you do suffer from like repetitive stress injuries, it will actually help with that. So I've set my mouse to go as fast as possible. You can on the Mac obviously go into your settings to speed up your mouse tracking. Now I've actually used a little hack which I will include a link in the show notes to my blog post on how I actually did this but I used a little terminal command to speed up my mouse even faster than the system will allow. So it's actually quite surprising when people touch my mouse it'll often jump to the corner because they're not used to that speed and what I will say is when you do speed up your mouse um, you will actually adapt to the quicker speed very quickly. This is a tip I've shared with a lot of people I say man your mouse is really slow speed it up and they for about the first hour they they're not quite used to it 
bit, but give it an hour or two, you start to get used to that extra speed, and it's amazing just how much quicker you can move your mouse around the screen. My next tip is to use a password manager, something like 1Password or LastPass. I've got 1Password here. Now, firstly, there's a few benefits to using 1Password or any kind of password manager. Um, the first is that it just makes logging in quicker. Uh, I can't tell you how much time I've wasted working with clients who don't know their passwords, uh, and so they have to go through trying a few different variations, they can't remember which one it was, so they have to reset their password. This wastes a huge amount of time, and uh, you'll just save a lot of time just keeping all your passwords in a password manager. So as well as helping you to be very secure and safe online, I actually think a password manager helps you to log in much quicker. A nice benefit of using one password is if I do the keyboard shortcut command and then backslash it'll bring up my uh, one password mini I'm gonna put in my one password here and then I can actually very quickly navigate to a website and log in straight away so let's search for Zapier and I'm going to open and fill so I'm gonna click that you watch what happens now I'm not touching anything it's opening Zapier it's gonna fill in my email uh, my password there and it's actually copied my six digit authentication code because I've got two fa factor authentication turned on and now I've log logged in extremely quickly I didn't have to wait for a text message either so using one password using open and fill makes logging in really quick and easy my next tip is to keep tabs to a minimum I, it's very common for me to be working with a customer or a client and I am looking at their browser I'm sharing their screen and they have dozens of tabs open like this if if not more than sometimes more than this and number one it will slow down your browser number two I don't even know how you begin to keep on top of your tabs I don't know why you need that many or how you know which one is for what um, so I don't know why anyone needs that many tabs open so my kind of philosophy with tabs is to close as many of them as I can as I'm working I, it's a bit like looking in the mirror when you drive every minute or so when you're driving you generally check your mirrors and it's the same when I'm browsing the web when I'm using my computer I'm constantly trying to close tabs that I no longer need. I will often open a bunch of tabs if I need to open a few things at once, but when I'm done with that tab, I close it. I don't leave it hanging around. The only tabs that I really leave open are Asana and Pipedrive, which are two apps that I use regularly throughout the day. Maybe you have email open as well, but very much as I'm working on various websites and pages and things and using different tools, when I'm done with a, uh, a page, I will close that tab. My next tip is to increase your typing efficiency using a text expansion tool, something like Text Expander. If you've watched my videos, listened to my podcast, or read my blog before you've probably heard me talk about text expander it comes up a lot because it really is a fantastic productivity tool with text expander I can write um, blocks of text whether it's an email template a sales script links contact information I can have loads of text saved in uh, big blocks like this and then I can use a snippet like this little snippet down here to quickly spit out that text so a very common example is email templates I have a folder here full of email templates that I use uh, which makes sending email very quick I've also got a lot of shorthand expressions that I use a lot of phrases um, that I that I use within email just words that I uh, or longer phrases that I have to type quite a lot and I have all that programmed in so it makes typing very quickly a really nice thing about text expander is it can even emulate keyboard strokes as well so if I pop on over to an email here an email that I often have to send is thanking somebody for making a booking with me so if I type co uh, semicolon booking it brings up this box here and I can put in someone's name like James and I can turn different parts on and off and let's see what happens so without touching anything you see it fills in the BCC subject line it tabbed straight to the body and spat out a bunch of text so this is a really great way to uh, keep all of those templates that you, you've maybe got in a note somewhere keep them really well organized but actually it makes finding and using those templates much quicker so I would say I am able to drastically cut down the amount of time I spend going through email because I use a tool like text expander it also makes really it ma really quick and easy to fill out things like forms if you've got addresses and contact information you have to type out a lot you can have all that programmed into snippets so I could type semicolon at and it just spits out my email address and my final tip is to use a clipboard manager so dozens if not hundreds of times a day you're probably copying text to your keyboard that you need to use the trouble is after you've uh, copied and used it and you copy something else that text that you'd previously copied is now gone you have to go back and copy it again with a clipboard manager it basically remembers everything you've copied now I use the clipboard manager built into Alfred Alfred is a search and kind of utility app for the Mac and it has a clipboard manager built in so using the keyboard shortcut control space I can open my clipboard manager and it's showing me here in order text 
that I have previously copied. And I can search for things. So I can say, I want to, I know that I said something about Asana and actually it was a link and it was Asana dash audit. And you can see there, I found that link that I'm looking for. I can hit return and it spits out the text into wherever I'm, wherever I'm typing. Along with text expander, this is one of my favorite ways to save time when it comes to typing, because often I'll copy text, emails, links, and things that I want to use again. Maybe I haven't saved these to text expander, but I know I've copied them in the last few days or even within the last month. So I can come into here, I can search and I can find those texts, those links that I've copied um, in, in recent history. So there you are, those are some quick tips you can use to save some time and be much more efficient on your computer. If you have any really important or useful tips that you'd like to share, I would love to hear them because I'm all about trying to improve my efficiency. Please leave me a comment below and I'd love to hear your tips. Thank you very much for watching.